Uh, let's see, let's go back to PowerPoint for a second. And I want to point something else out. And it has to do with something called visual hierarchy. So let's talk about visual hierarchy for a moment. If we look at this video, the sample, what's one thing that you can look at here and kind of pick out as far as a visual technique or element that kind of adds to it? Does anybody have a guess? I'll just point out that notice that the word kindness is bigger, bolder, right? Notice that Mark Twain's image here is of a different contrast than the background. This is something that is called the visual hierarchy. And it's a very important design kind of concept. So let's just kind of touch on that for a little bit. Visual hierarchy is the fancy schmancy term for what I call leading the eye. And it basically states that the arrangement of presentation of elements in a way that implies importance. In other words, visual hierarchy influences the order in which the human eye perceives what it sees. Okay, again, that's all just kind of mumbo jumbo and stuff like that. But essentially, when we do something like bold a word against other content, what happens? Well, visually, in the hierarchy of how our eye works, we're drawn there. And it's a design element that we can and should use to great effect. If we do something like change a color from white to something else, in fact, let me change this to white. And which is easier to read, this or that? Sometimes we'll use it to break up text and, again, to punch the eye over to what it is we want to have people look at. So that's kind of the basics of it. But there's a really good article by Canva, or post by Canva, I'll put this in the chat box so you can go take a look at it. There's a lot to learn from understanding this concept. It's a real science, literally, and it's one of those things that as video designers and creators, we would at least want to know about and be able to use to our advantage. So this is an excellent post that kind of goes into it. And some of the key elements then would be something like this. To use different contrasts and different sizes. If you look at this particular sample image, it's very apparent what it is the creator of this content <laughs> wants you to do, right? So if we use things like color and size, that's one thing that we can do. And here's another example that I really just kind of love. Look at this and think about its design in terms of this visual hierarchy. When you do look at this, what happens? What do you garner from this very important piece of visual content? You know, a business card, arguably, is something that needs to draw eyeballs, but I look at it and I look at the visual elements and I see Dwayne, you know. I, do I care that it's Dwayne Smith necessarily? It's Dwayne. Dude, it's Dwayne. And then the graphical element here draws the eye. Uh, he's an independent kind of guy, but he's a graphic designer. So we can see that it's a mixture of fonts, weights of those fonts, colors, right? And then these other little embellishments, okay? That really kind of punch it home. Certainly there's the other information that is important, but the things that we want people to instantly be able to pick out and utilize and digest mentally are right there and readily apparent. 
you know, his email address. Very important. Uh, but it's going to draw our eye here. And yeah, if I decide that I like Dwayne, I want to call Dwayne. <laughs> yeah, I can find his phone number and stuff like that. Those are just a couple of things that are really rather important. And they lay out all of this stuff in that article, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. One way that you can tell if your slides or your design or whatever it is you're focusing on content wise and visually is good in terms of visual hierarchy is to do what's called the squint test. That's literally what they call it. <laughs> so what you do is you just kind of roll back from your computer screen and squint and see what jumps out at you. What is your eye drawn to when you rather filter out some of the superfluous stuff. So they call it the squint test. And it's kind of a easy way to just ballpark or I guess eyeball <laughs> would be the technical term for that. What it is that jumps out as far as your design goes. Okay. Any questions on that? So the sample here kind of uses that technique and I don't know, I'd probably even experiment with making this bigger. And of course, in Camtasia, we can do such a thing on a word by word basis, right? But it's just something to be aware of and to know about. Oh, yeah, Julie had some good comments here. Let's go back to our sample here. Uh, she mentions he's positioned at about a third into the picture, the rule of thirds. That's a great point, Julie. The rule of thirds is actually one of the visual hierarchy, not rules, but elements. What she means is that the image of Mark Twain here resides in the left third of the, uh, the content frame, right? And again, I'll just point out that what they also did was they added some contrast to this picture it looks like to me. Right? So yeah, this is a very effective image. And then she also mentions that he's looking into, not out from, the picture. Another great idea and concept of leading the eye. If Mark Twain here was facing the other way, then it literally kind of confuses our brain. <laughs> as to where we should look next. So the idea there is that he is very intentionally looking into the content. He's looking towards what it is that we want to see. And that's uh, one way that we can also kind of increase the effectiveness of images that we put on slides and in our content. Those are great. Susan says, also, the block text for the quote is at about a third vertical. Yep. All those things, right? Uh, it, like I say, it's a complete science and an art to it. Uh, designers who do things like layout graphics, I mean, they follow this stuff religiously. So as visual content creators, of course, we want to rip off as much of that juice as we possibly can. 